This is the Cinea engineering, financial engineering team, and we will present to you today how to complete the new financial information file for the application to the 2022 large scale call of the Innovation Fund. This file is a mandatory annex of your application as described on page 11 of the call text. As you may have noticed for several reasons, we have now integrated in one single Excel file the relevant cost computation template with the financial model summary sheets, the cost efficiency computation, and the grant disbursement schedule. We hope that by doing this, we will prevent mistakes in terms of coherence of data used for the relevant costs and in the financial model assumptions. We have made this tutorial in order to help you fill the Excel, this Excel file. However, if you still have questions, please do not hesitate to contact the help desk of the, of the Innovation Fund and the portal. If we start looking at the Excel file, you will see directly that it includes different sheets uh, of different colors, um, sheets in gray, blue and red. Uh, the gray ones, I would say, include um, the usual disclaimer, introduction and definitions, and also a history of changes. The ones which you will need to fill are the blue ones, while the red ones will give you automatically the different results. If we now move to the introduction sheet, intro and in <laughs> sorry, intro and definitions. So the introduction includes several guidelines, um, as well as more details on the capital expenditure items, which are allowed under the relevant cost computation. Uh, these different capital expenditure items uh, cover, I mean, the most obvious uh, items like construction, site infrastructure, and development costs, as you can see here described in this sheet. You will also find further down a list of costs which are actually excluded from the relevant cost computations, like the VAT, training expenses, or insurance premium, to name a few. In addition, working capital needs, depreciation, or negative operation cash flow are not part of the relevant cost computation. Just to remind you also that the relevant costs only includes costs which are incurred after the submission of the application. Costs which have been incurred, meaning costs being paid, which have been paid or which have been invoiced before the submission of the application are not taken into account in the relevant costs computation. Now, if we go to the main blue sheets, to start with the financial model summary inputs. So, as you will see in these sheets, you will need to fill only the yellow cells. Please do not try to fill in other cells than the ones highlighted in yellow. And also, please do not try to tamper with the um, formulas which are included in the calculation sheets. So as you can see here, you will start with, of course, the name of the project. Please try to use um, units in thousands of euros. As we have now integrated the relevant cost computation in this single Excel file, you will have the choice here in this cell on row 16 between the three relevant costs methodologies, being the levelized cost, the reference plan, or the last resort, the no reference plan. Based on your choice in this cell, actually you will see that if I move to the relevant cost inputs sheet, which is the sheet number three here, 
you will find a different template to fill in. If you have chosen the levelized cost methodology, you will need to fill in these templates to only the market reference price of your different main products. The model will compute directly based on the sale price you will have mentioned in the input sheet will compute directly the green premium, which might be applicable to the products of your project. If I come back now to the summary input sheet and I choose reference plant methodology, if you go back to the input sheet, you will see that this sheet, this sheet has changed automatically. And in line with the reference plant methodology, this sheet asks you the details of the WAC, the weighted average cost, relevant for the reference plant. You will fill in the WAC for your project in the first sheet, in the input sheet. This sheet here asks you the data for the WAC for the reference plant. It will also ask you the data for the revenues, the capital expenditure, and the operal the operational expenditure of your reference plan. As we also said during the information day, please make sure that all data you use in this FIF, in this financial information file, are really coherent with your financial model. So what you will fill in here should be coherent. Same for all the data you will put here in this input sheet. Now, if I choose the last methodology, which is, as I said, no reference plan, of course, in the RC input, you will have nothing to fill as the no reference plan methodology will use the capital expenditure, the revenue, and the operational expenditure of your project. All these data will be filled in this input sheet. If I scroll down further, the model asks you for several dates, which you put here in these cells. Uh, these are dates, only the construction period should be actually in month. As I mentioned before, it will ask you the, for the details of the WAC computation. As I repeat, this is the WAC of the project. This is not your corporate WAC. So the weighted average cost of capital should re reflect the cost of equity and the cost of the debt, which will be used to finance your project. Here, if I scroll down further in the construction funding sources, you will need to add in the different amounts. And of course, directly the model will compute the different percentages. Now on row 67, we ask you to fill in the greenhouse gas emission avoidance, which are actually derived from the greenhouse gas emission avoidance template. We need this greenhouse gas emission avoidance in order to compute the cost efficiency ratio. So please make sure that the data you fill in this row are completely coherent with the other greenhouse gas template. Scrolling down further, you will need to fill the cells with the details of your revenues. If you have different products, um, please fill in the different rows. If your project also produces byproducts, please mention these. If you have products with different kind of units, let's say megawatt hour tons, please choose doing first the main product in the one generating the most revenues. And it's quite important if you use the levelized cost methodology, put this one in the main lines of revenues. If you have another product, which is, I'd say, a bit more marginal, please put that in the byproducts. Alternatively, if you have also some other revenues from services or other things, 
please add them in the line other revenues here on row 108. This row 108 could also be used if your project generates some cost savings. So please put these cost savings in this line. As you may have seen on the left hand side of this sheet, we have added a plus because of course the data you will need to put for the revenues will be with a plus sign. While if you scroll further, when we talk about costs, when we talk about capital expenditure, the cells will need to be filled in with amounts with a minus sign before these amounts. Please keep that in mind. If you plan to ask for additional grants, uh, from national grants, for example, which are linked to your operational expenditure, please mention them here under these rows. So as I said previously, now we go down to costs of goods sold. Please gain with a minus sign, and please be try, try to be coherent with the different projects or services you have mentioned here before. Scrolling down again, you will find, I would say, the, the main usual lines used to compute your profit and loss account with other operating expenses as GNA, depreciation, interest expenses, taxes, and any other PNL items. As I said, these lines, these rows should be filled with the data you have derived from a more detailed financial model. After the profit and loss account input, we now move to the cash flow statement where we ask you to mention here the working capital financing need, the cash taxes, and other cash from operations. The cash from investments, and mainly actually the items linked to the capital expenditure, will be derived from the second sheet capex input. So please do not fill these lines, they will be filled in automatically based on the input you will use for the sheet number two. As I said, some items are excluded from the capital expenditure for the relevant cost computation. So please, if there are some of these items, include them in the row 198. Maintenance capex, maintenance capex are dealt with under this line 201. Grant disbursement during operation will actually be derived from the grant breakdown input. So again, don't try to fill any data in these cells. The last one deals with additional grants you may have request or requested or you plan to request during the construction period I mean national grants for example so please mention these ones here if you really intend or if you have already started the selection procedure now moving further you will see the, the usual other cash flow items like equity injections senior debt drawdown junior debt and then minus, of course, for your cash flow statement, any dividend, any reimbursement of shareholder loan, any interest payment on shareholder loan, same for senior debt and junior debt. Now, last but not least, um, we ask you to provide the information to complete the balance sheet. So again, you will find the main items you see in the assets and liability side of your balance sheet, like cash, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities. Again, the data here should actually be derived from your more detailed financial model. If I now move to the capital expenditure inputs here, you will find that you have several lines uh, with different detailed items you may use. 
We ask you to fill in this sheet with portly data. The reason is we will be able with portly figures to derive the amount of capital expenditure which will be spent during the different work packages and therefore we'll be able to compare these to the grant requested in this period and check the proportionality of the one to the other. So please fill this with quarterly data. I've talked about the relevant cost inputs in sheet three. Now, if I move to the last input sheet, which is the grant breakdown input, this sheet, you will be able actually to fill in this sheet only when you have um, decided what's your grant amount. This grant amount, of course, can only be computed once you have filled in all the rows for the computation of your relevant cost. Once you have your grant and you decide to allocate the grant to the different work packages, so you have the ability to fill this table with also the allocation of the grant, not only by work package, but also by beneficiary or by affiliated entity. So you can provide all the details here in this table. What you would need also to fill in is here the month. It's the number of months uh, which will take to fill in this work package. So in these cells, actually it's a number you will need to fill in and the model will directly automatically compute the end date of the work package. You will see also in the model several checks, not only on balance sheet, on the cash items, on the balance sheet, but you will also have some checks on the grant amount, for example, disbursed prior to or at financial close. You will also have some checks, as we see here in this sheet model check, also linked to um, the amount requested, the amount of grant requested during the operations, but also linked to um, <clears throat> any proportionality issue. So this would allow you to spot directly if there is any problem in the way you have filled in the model. So this was the last input sheet, so you would need to fill with your data. If I now move to the red sheets, the first one is what we call the financial model summary sheet. So it takes the three financial statements, the first being profit and loss accounts summarized with the main items. You will find afterwards the balance sheet, as I say, with the checks on the balance sheet check, of course, and on the cash balance with the different items. Then we move to the cash flow statement and using this data, the model will compute the internal rate of return of the project in the first stage without any other national grant you may request. The first part is without the innovation fund grant. The second is including the innovation fund grant. It will give you the internal rate of return plus the NPV of the project, not on the equity level. And the second part will give you the same data, including any other national grant you may require. So in addition to the project profitability, this sheet will also compute directly the debt service cover ratio to see to what extent the project is able to service or not um, any senior debt you would use in the financing plan. The next red sheet deals with the relevant cost calculation, so derives from the different uh, relevant cost inputs, the model will directly compute the, re the relevant cost. Then you will have to play with <clears throat> this cell to see if you go up to the maximum funding rate of 60% or <clears throat> in order to increase your competitiveness, uh, you decide to require less than 60% for the grant. 
So in the model will, of course, directly compute uh, what's the percentage. Once you have the relevant cost and of course the grants, based on that, the model with compute directly also the cost efficiency ratio, uh, which you will be also you will also be able to use uh, while filling the um, application form. Fourth sheet will give you an overview of some main items uh, in terms of project profitability, the key dates. Uh, the construction sources and uses, also sources and uses during operation, but also some key uh, operating metrics dealing with your revenues and your cost structure. Uh, <clears throat> there will be also some graphs which will help to see the evolution of revenues and operational expenditure, and also cash flow and annual debt service rate shapes. Last but not least, here in the red sheets, you will have another model report giving the main items of the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement with without and with the innovation fund, as well as some growth rates computed automatically on the product and on the cost of goods sold. We do hope that this tutorial has been useful for you. Again, if you have questions, feel free to ask them through the help desk of the Innovation Fund. Uh, we are there to help you um, prepare your application. Well, good luck and um, see you one day. <laughs>